My name's Teddy Benson, and we're here with the Long Hair Guys, drinking 805s in San Diego, California, my hometown. I'm from the Southeast, born and raised, and uh, ain't nothing in this world that I can't do. I'm a winner. So my name is California Jones. I'm from City Heights, East San Diego, East Dago, you know, um, California. United States. I know you guys sell this stuff all across the world, right? Yeah. You're still the same person if you cut your hair or you're not. But being a people person, I've been described different ways by people. And you you be like, oh, that's Teddy? Tall dude? Tall black dude? The black rapper dude? And then now that I have dreads, it's like, oh, you talking about the big black dude with dreads. Like it's, there are things that are always gonna be indicators for how people say who you are, but my dreads are different than the next person's dreads. They're my identity. They're a part of what makes me me. Yeah. This here, this little this little bit, you know, that's that's the, the, the woes in the world of scraping at me. And these, these go with me through every last battle. They know how my head was last time. If I take this out right now, one of them will be like linked to the side because he's seen this position so much. Like mm -hmm. they've been with me. They're part of my 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 journey. I, I describe them like uh like the kung fu movies, right? You know, they be this corny dude in the beginning of the movie, and then they go meet the guy and they go to the top of the mountain. They always run up that long thing of stairs and at the top of the mountain, their hair gets longer and they eat and they sleep and they train and they work hard and their hair gets longer and it gets longer and it gets longer. And then right when they finally hit fruition, they cut it and they pop up the next scene and they're uh, the guru master in the movie, it's time to kick butt, right? I tried that. I did that, I ate and I slept and I prayed at the top of the mountain. I thought I had did it and I thought I became a guru master. I cut my hair off and I lost all my energy. Oh shit. I lost all yeah. my superpower. I lost it all. Damn. I thought I needed to, to have that fresh clean cut what they tried to tell me. I thought I needed to, to be what women's depiction of what a man should look like. Mm. My hair is back and now I'm stronger than ever. I'm more beautiful than ever. It's not because somebody else told me I'm beautiful, it's because I love me and my journey. When you think of Black History Month, I mean, what does is, what is this mean to you? Or just your thoughts? I know you got a lot to share on, on a lot of different topics. So I'm just wondering with the climate of everything too and how crazy it's been this last year, like what, what's your thoughts? With me, honestly, I think Black History Month is a slap in the face. Not only is it the shortest month of the year, um, it's a it's a slap in the face to what my people have been through as a whole. Hey, you guys are gonna be cool, and we're gonna keep the the racial slurs to a, a minimum, and we're gonna be respectful for one month out the year, and then after that, fuck you guys. You know, it's like um, you're treating me like my mother died, like. You're a piece of shit, but I'm not going to tell you you're a piece of shit because you might have died <clears throat> for a month. And not to not to disrespect anybody that gets appreciated during this month, because the fact that somebody's using their voice to speak up is a blessing. It's beautiful. But to me, I think that the way that we carry ourselves and the energy that we give ourselves for the shortest month of the year should be carried through the whole year. It's something that you should wear with pride all year, especially after you've experienced your first February, that you've learned it. I'm nothing like what they tried to depict me as. I'm, I am golden. I am history. And I'm going to continue to write it the way that I want to write it instead of just being average and never achieve anything when you can see that they beat the odds. I don't want to just remember that I have greatness in me for 28 days. Right. I want to remember that I'm great 365 days a year. So a lot of people are going to be like, what you mean slap in the face? And I hope that, that that's an explanation for the people that's like, what you mean slap in the face? No, that, that's a slap in the face. Treat me right all year. Mm. It's like it's like people nowadays don't ce celebrate Valentine's Day like that because it's like, you should love me all year long. 
I don't need one day for you to show out and show me you love me. It should be done all year long. <clears throat> Why not have that mentality with everything? I should be great all year long. I should post about black people that did things, this greatness, because there's people that look up to me. I'm somebody's savior. I'm somebody's finding grace. So if I post it, they take that as gospel. Mm. So I need to be taking my platform 365 days a year to boast black pride. Yeah. We have, we have, it's like a, it's like a, a double edged sword. You know what I mean? When you're black, you can get away with anything because we get to pull that card, the slavery card, right? I don't want to get away with anything. It's not worth it. I just want to be better. Mm. I just want to show people how to be better. I can say whatever I want. I could talk about whatever race I want to. I can make any joke I want to because it's like a pity, a pat, a, a pat on the back like, Oh yeah, you, you can pull that slavery card. We did do you shitty. Mm. That's messed up, right? Yeah, you got it. Nobody else could do it. I can say things like black pride. I literally have black power tattooed on my hand. Nobody will tell me you're a piece of shit. If you as a white man get white power tattooed on your hand, you will be the enemy of the world. Yeah, done. It's over. For me, mine is 365 days a year. That's why it's tattooed on my hand. It's not, I'm not better than you. I'm not racist. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not any one of those things. Mm -hmm. I'm just a proud black man. Yeah. I'm the beginning. That doesn't make me any more apt to win because there's people that aren't black that are winning more than me. So what I should be doing is trying to figure out 365 days a year, how to be like all the people that are getting mentioned. Right. One of the first women millionaires was a black woman, Madam CJ Walker. Like, I need to learn how to be like that. What is the difference between her? Yeah. I don't have time to make excuses. And Black History Month is a month full of excuses and people go on rants and they turn into to Malcolm Jamal Warner <laughs> be like, for 28 days and then they go back to being nothing. When I spend time like telling people, you can look up my social history. I got I got time out there that got nothing to do with February. Like, hey, we should all be wearing daishikis. One day out of the week, everybody should wear a daishiki so that we can have some establishment of feeling self like they did back in the 70s, that, that bit of unity. Nobody cared. Nobody's listening. They don't want that. They want to stay stuck in the, cause it's easy to blame somebody. And for 28 days, you mean to tell me you're going to pretend like you wasn't just stuck in the system. Mm. You could only just post. I didn't make one post. I got a song called black man that I did. That is perfect for this, but I feel like I should not share it right now because that's like tacky. I feel like I'm not trying to capitalize on that. That's capitalization. That's not marketing, that's capitalization. And that's profitable and I'm in a business where I need to be profitable. But to me, that song should have been popping all year long because we're black all year long. I shouldn't be posting that song right now, hoping that because everybody's hyped up on black pride and black power for 28 days, that now the song's gonna get the information, the, 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 the buzz that it's yeah. supposed to get. That's mm -hmm. fake. I don't have time for fakeness. Yeah. I don't want to be slapped in the face. I just want to win. I want to win with pride. I want to win with a smile. And I want to teach other people how to win. 365 days a year. Yeah, I started growing my hair, which is crazy. I grew it out. I started growing my hair. I had braids. Um, it stopped growing which everybody said, but it really didn't stop growing. It's just my hair is very nappy, so the ends kept breaking off. So it was like I was cutting off the growth every time because mm -hmm. it was get cut off, you know, the ends. And I went to College Up North. And so a lot of the dudes up there, they had dreads. And I just didn't want to grow dreads just simply because they was like, you need to dread that. And you need to go on and dread that shit up. It ain't growing no more, you know? And so, but when I went, when I left them, I came down south 
uh, back down this way and I watched this Bob Marley documentary. And then from there, I just was like, yeah, I am going to go ahead and dread it. You know what I mean? That was the excuse, but really it was kind of like a little bit of the influence of being in the Bay Area, mm. which kind of mm -hmm. really opened me up. I never seen so many dudes. It Honestly, the first thing that came to my mind was Fraggle Rock. I'm not going to lie. I don't know, you know, if you guys ever seen Fraggle Rock, they all had those like crazy hair and stuff like that. But everybody have dread, had dreads up there. It was like 2004, whatnot, the whole Thiz, Mac Dre thing. Yeah, yeah. It was a big thing, the hyphy yeah. movement. Um, oh, we were at Fresno State when the hyphy movement was happening. Exactly, was so you guys dude. know. Well, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, you guys know. So that was like a big influence. But what I learned through a lot of uh you know history and being incarcerated was um the dreads kind of was like the offspring of the black power movement a lot of people don't know a lot of those guys grew their hair out to let it be free you know they was just like you know anti-society anti-government anti-establishment they grew their hair out um, they had the big froze you know even you know, in the South Americas, all across the world, it was just, a, it was symbolic of just being a freedom fighter, you know, a revolutionary. It was revolutionary to grow your hair out. And, you know, as a couple of OGs told me, it was like after the Black Power movement kind of died off in the 60s and the 70s, all these dudes had these froze. It was like, what you gonna do? A lot of these guys just start dreading them up in the Bay Area, mm -hmm. you know? So it was like the dreads was kind of like, was like the next thing. Mm -hmm. You know, from the fro to the dreads. Um, I kind of took that with me, you know, and it's kind of, in a way, it's like a new, especially for blacks, you know what I mean? That's that's our long hair, you know? You got heavy metal, white guys, they want to be counterculture, skaters, rockers, mm -hmm. punk rockers, all of that. You know, they grow their hair out, hair long and all of that. You know, black people, we've been doing it too. Mm -hmm. Um you know, it's a gorilla thing too. You know, people are out there, I think like Teddy said, it's a symbol of um, study, you know, but it's also a lot of those guys who was hiding out, even the Masons, I believe, had long hair, if I'm not mistaken, you know, and it's just when you're out there hiding now, when you're on the run, you know, you have, you know, you're not really thinking about cutting your hair. You might be trying to disguise yourself, whatnot. You grow your hair out, turn into a new person. Um, so a lot of that lives in the black community. <laughs> One thing that I've, that I can say about race is that as far as for black people, right? Um, and black history month, I think it's important that we have some time that we sit down. Everybody needs to sit down and to tie that in with like incarceration. For me, that was my time to sit down. Mm. you know um and read and study right now out here in society there's so many distractions we don't have that much time to really sometimes you need somebody to say hey look you need a sign you know because you're moving too fast that's what black history month is it's just some type of sign just it, a little acknowledgement you know to people who had a tremendous impact in this country in mm -hmm. america yeah um you know, some people say that we should do it every day. I mean, that goes without saying, you should praise God every day, you know, but on this day, we should at least do that, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, and tilt your cap or whatever. Specifically in this country, because there's so much history and even without the whole slavery thing, just the, the, um, the influence that black people have had, we just been here. You know, we've been here. You know, we're not going to go anywhere. You know, it's kind of like, uh, but the touch on my hair, though, I start growing my hair. And um, around the time of my trial, and it was hard for me to get a haircut because I was in solitary confinement, mm -hmm. you know, so when you're in solitary confinement, they won't let you cut your hair. You can't get anything sharp. A lot of guys, they'll lock them up for a long time and then they'll get out and we could tell because they'll have long hair and their, you know, beard and everything. You'd be like, oh man, this dude's been in there for like, some guy's been in there for years. Right. You know, and I was in there for years myself and it got to the point where I was just, 
to the point I just kept my hair. And I had a, there was a time where I was gonna go to trial and it was like, you should cut your hair and try to fit this look or whatever. And uh, I think everybody with long hair goes to that point where they're just like, okay, I'm gonna have to cut it or I'm not, you know? And I think that's symbolic of us getting to that point. I think everybody, man and woman, we all get to that point in society where we're just either gonna conform or we're not gonna conform, you know? And we all have to deal with it. We all have to face it one way or the other. You know, you may do it a little bit, you may do it a lot. You know, and having long hair is just kind of like, you know, it's like a tilt to the cap of people who just don't conform, you know, mm -hmm. who just say, you know, we don't have to be like that, we be like this.